that we can, or four qualities that we can inculcate in our lives. Because we are already chanting, we are already coming to temple. There are certain four, three, four things that we could do by which we could attract her, attraction to other and merciful glance upon us, right? We all want blessings. Festival day is the day when we attract, when we want to attract blessings. So what are the four things we could do to attract her blessings? We will discuss this. So first, Purish Shrimati Radharan. Chaitanya Tirtamra, the, the elixir of all Gaudiya Vaishnava scriptures, explains in Adilila, 4th chapter, text number 65 onwards till 105, the position of Srimati Radharan. The essence of all of these verses is simple. So, Srimati Radharani is like not different from Krishna. That is the essence of the scripture understanding. She is the tender hearted female counterpart of Krishna. She is same as Krishna, but the feminine aspect of Krishna. She is the supreme mother. Krishna is the supreme father. So we approach the Lord, but just like a child, when the child is naughty, mischievous, as young children, I remember we used to create a ruckus at home with the three brothers. A lot of mischief, so I remember once we broke the television set, we were playing cricket at home, and then we were scared in the evening. Father would come back, father is very strict. So, what did we do? We ran to our mother. <laughs> mother is always compassionate, kind, and then she presented a whole different story to father. She said, Please forgive them, and then she kind of pacified our father and my father was not angry with us as much as we thought he would be thanks to the intervention of the most compassionate mother. Similarly, in our spiritual life, when we come in front of Krishna, Krishna is strict. Krishna knows all the mistakes we have done. But Mother Hara, in the vocative sense, we address her as Hare, Hare Krishna, Radha Krishna. When we approach Srimati Radharani and beg her for mercy, she petitions Krishna. Krishna, please forgive him. Please forgive her. Please accept this condition so. And Srila Prabhupada says in the answer that when Radharani requests Krishna, Krishna cannot refuse. Because Krishna is completely captured by the love of Srimati Radharani. Who is Srimati Radharani? She is the same as Krishna, the feminine counterpart of Krishna. She is always with Krishna. So the Chaitanya Chaitanya gives different examples. Like sun is never separate from sunshine. You can never say sunshine is different from sun. Sun is a source, but 
sun is not different from sunshine. Sunshine is not different from sun. Sun cannot exist without sunshine. And sunshine has no meaning without the source of sun. Similarly, Krishna is like the sun. Shri Radharani is sunshine. The Chaitanya Chaitanya gives further examples of musk and sand. The sand cannot be separated from the musk. So like that, Shri Radharani cannot be separated from Krishna. She is always with Krishna. In the spiritual realm, the spiritual world, Krishna has three potencies. Sandini, Samvit and Ladini. Sandini potency is that potency by which the whole variegatedness in the spiritual world is manifest. And Samvit potency is the potency or the energy by which we have cognizance, we have awareness of our relationship with Krishna. That is called as Samvit potency. And Ladini potency is the energy by which there is happiness in the spiritual realm. And the personification of the Ladini potency is Srimati Radharani. So when we are approaching Srimati Radharani, we are approaching Krishna's pleasure potency, Krishna's happiness potency. So this is the position of Srimati Radharani. So this is the identity of Srimati Radharani. Now, what does she exemplify? Why is Shri Radharani most worshipable? Because she has set the highest standard of devotion. She loves Krishna unconditionally. We are not there. We are not at that level. But we pray to Shri Radharani that we can develop the same mood. Because she can't, she doesn't think of anything else except pleasing Krishna. So we as devotees of Krishna, we want to reach that level. Srimati Radharani is the leader amongst all the gopis and the gopis are the highest devotees of Krishna. There is nobody better than the gopis. Aradya Bhagavan Vajesha Tanaya Tadhama Vrinda Shriman Bhagavatam Pramana Madam Prema Pumato Maha Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matanidam Tatra Dharana Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us five special gifts of us, five special instructions, you could say, or the standards. So these are the five most worshipable. Uh, things for devotees in his con, in Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. First is Aradya Bhagavan Prajesha Tanaya. Our worshipable Lord is the darlings of Vrindavan, Krishna. And our worshipable place, Tadham Vrindavanam. Vrindavan is our most worshipable place. Abo. Ramya Kachi Dupasana Prajabudu. And our heroes, the role model for worshipping. We should worship Krishna like the Ramya Kati Dupasana Prajapati, like the gopis of Vrindavan. They are the best devotees. And then, where do we read about all this? Where can we learn about devotional service to Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam Pramana Mamala, from the most sacred scripture of Srimad Bhagavatam. And what is the highest gift we want in our lives? Prema Kumarto Maha. Love of God. So these are the five things. Krishna is our worshipable Lord, our worshipable place, Dham is Vrindavan. Our hero is a role model for worship, the gopis of Vrindavan. And our scripture which will guide us to develop the love of Krishna is Srimad Bhagavatam. And our ultimate gift that we seek is love of God. These are the five things that we miscon for. And gopis are our role model. And amongst the gopis, Srimati Radharani is the highest. She is always remembering Krishna. She always wants to offer everything of her existence to Krishna. In fact, when 
when Akurura came to Vrindavan and took the go uh, took Krishna and Balram away from Vrindavan, the gopis till then had kept their love for Krishna secret. But on this day they decided that Krishna is being taken away, we have to stop Krishna. So they came in front of Akurura's chariot and they stopped Krishna and Balram and they cried torrents of tears. And in Vrindavan, everybody knows the best, the greatest lover of Krishna is Shrimati Radharani. Vrindavanan Gopakanascha Gopyo Vilokya Govinda Vyoga Khinnam Radha Jagu Shashu Vilochana Bhyam Govinda Dhamo Dharma Dhadeti In Vrindavan, all the Gopas, all the Gopis, they are only remembering Krishna. But they know as they are serving Krishna, that amongst them, Radha Jagusha Shrivilochana Abhyam, Srimati Radharani is feeling the most intense separation from Krishna. She is constantly crying tears of separation from Krishna. And what is she chanting? Govinda Damodara Madhaveti. So, are you chant? You can repeat after me. Wait, I chant first and then you can repeat after me. Govinda Damodara Madhaveti. 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 In fact, when they stopped Akrura, Sukhdeva Goswami writes in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Evam Bruvanam Virahatura Drusham Vrajas Triya Krishna Vishita Manasa Visrija Lajam Prurusma Susmaran Govindada Modara Madhaveti. So when the gopis realize Krishna has been taken away, Viraha, they felt intense separation from Krishna, anticipating that Krishna is going to go away. Evam Guruvanam Viraha Tura Dasham Vrajasatriya These women of Vrindavan, Krishna Vishita Manasa, their mind was completely focused on Krishna. This is where we want to reach, as the word is gone. We want to reach a state where our mind is completely focused on God, on Krishna. And the gopis have set that standard. Vishita Manasa. And when they set their mind on Krishna, they were so confident and fearless that in the Vrindavan culture, the women were very shy during those days. So now, these gopis, Viswitya Lajam, they gave up their shyness because they wanted to stop Krishna. And they were crying tears, Rurusma Susta, remembering Krishna, they were constantly crying. Gaurabhai Maharaj, when he inaugurated the Krishna Balaram temple in Bhuvaneshwar, he began the class by saying, So, we have opened a crying school here. The inauguration of the temple, he said, We have opened a crying school. We, are, we want to teach and learn how to cry for Krishna, crying for God in love. And the gopis were doing that, crying torrents of tears in love for Krishna. Visrija Lajam Prurusma Susmaran Govinda Damodara Madhaveti Say again, I will chant once, you can repeat after me. Govinda Damodara Madhaveti Govinda Damodara Madhaveti Govinda
these are the two topics I wanted to discuss briefly. First, who is Srimati Radharani? She is Krishna's Samvik potency, uh, Lajani potency. She is not different from Krishna. She is the tender hearted mother, the universal mother. She is the one who will give us shelter of Krishna. And what does she exemplify? She exemplifies unconditional selfless love for Krishna and the greatest attachment for Krishna. And we as devotees, we look up to her, we seek her blessings that we can develop the same attachment to the Lord and our lives can become most auspicious. Now, we need to discuss on this most auspicious day of appearance of Srimati Radharani. What can we do in our lives by which we can get her blessings? So there are four uh, humble suggestions that I have learned from observing my seniors in Islam. I have been practicing for a few years Krishna Consciousness and when I see devotees of Srimati Radharani, when I hear classes on the devotees of Srimati Radharani, I have gathered these four qualities that all our senior leaders, devotees have appealed to us to imbibe. And the first is the mode of service. See, we are suffering in this world because we have this desire to enjoy. When we change the game, when we cultivate a consciously we cultivate a desire to serve, we start not only becoming happy, we also start attracting a lot of grace. Enjoyment and service is different. Some people say the philosophy is the philosophy of ice cream. What is the philosophy of ice cream? Ice cream philosophy is enjoy before it melts. <laughs> But Hare Krishna devotees, our philosophy is philosophy of the candle light. Philosophy of the candle. What is the candle philosophy? Give light before it melts. Both candle will melt, the ice cream will also melt. But the candle will give light before it melts. Of course, we want to be enjoyer also, so fine. We can't give up that enjoyer tendency, no problem. But at least Sometime every day we can consciously cultivate a desire, a piece of desire, an aspiration that Krishna, I want to serve. See, the service mode is so important because Radharani's mode of service and loving Krishna is so exemplary that the only thing Krishna cannot understand, Krishna is the Supreme Lord, there is nothing he can't figure out. He is the Lord in our heart, he knows everything, but there is only one thing Krishna doesn't know, and that is. How much Radharani loves me? How can she love me so much? He can't figure out how can somebody love him so much. This is the only thing Krishna fails in. This is the most amazing thing. Otherwise, Krishna knows everything. But he can't figure out this. Because Radharani's love is unparalleled. And Krishna becomes so bewildered. He says, I want to understand. What is the nature of Radharani? I want to understand what is the qualities that she has, what are the qualities in me that is attracting her so much. And I want to experience the same happiness which she is experiencing. <laughs> and therefore Krishna comes as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You see God and I? On the left side of our altar, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna who has come in the mood of Radharani to understand what it is to love Krishna. Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisho Vangeva Svadhyo Yena Dutta Madhurima Kidrisho Vamadiya Saukyam Chasya Parano Bhavataha Kidrisham Veti Lopha Tadbhavadaya Samajani Sachi Garva Sindhu Hari Hindu. The scriptures explain these are the three reasons why Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. First, Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisho Vangeva. What is the glory of Srimati Radharani? How can somebody love me so much? Krishna is thinking. Swadhyoyena Dutta Madhurima Kidrisho Vavadi. What are my qualities that attract you so much to me? And thirdly, Saukyam Chasya Madhano Bhavataha Kidrisham Veti Lobhar What is the 
saukhyam? What is the happiness that she experiences in remembering me? I want to taste that. So, say Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nai Anya. Lord Chaitanya is not different from Radha and Krishna. It's Krishna who has got the mood of Radha Rani. And he's in that mood, he's constantly, so you see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is crying tears in ecstasy, of ecstasy, chanting, dancing. Because he's in the mood of Radha Rana. He is welcoming Krishna. And he's, he's praying to Krishna. He's like remembering Krishna. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Radhini Shakti Rasma Ekatmana Vapi Kuvipura Deha Vedanga Tauta Chaitanyakyam Prakara Madhuna Tadvayam Chaitya Maktam Radha Bhava Dyuti Suvaditam Naomi Krishna Swarupam So Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Radhini I spoke about it. The Radhini potency, the happiness potency of Krishna is Shrimati Radha Rani. Ekatmanam api bhuvi pura deha vedam gatautu Lord is one, but eternally the Lord has become two, Radha and Krishna. For that, there can be a loving exchange is experienced. And now these two have again become one. That's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Akyam Prakara Madhuna Tattvayam Chaitya Mahaptam. The two again have become one. And how? Radha, Bhava, Dhyuti. Bhava means the feelings of Radha Rani. And duty means complexion. Srimad Radharani has a golden complexion. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu assumed the golden complexion and the mood of Srimad Radharani. Radha Bhava Dhiti Suvalitam Naomi Krishna Swarupa. He is Krishna, but in the mood of Radharani. So when we approach Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we approach him in this mood that, Oh Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you are Krishna, but you are teaching us how to love Krishna. And Radharani, he is always the, the, the see in his con, we love God not in union as much as in separation. Our, our mood, mood is vipralamba. Oh, I want to be with Krishna. We don't go around saying, Oh, Krishna is my darling. Krishna, I have Krishna with me. Our mood is not like that. We are not Sahajiya. Sahajiya are those who take Krishna very cheaply. You know, Krishna is mine. I have Krishna with me. Our mood is a little refined, little nuanced. Let me share what it is. It is like, you know, I had Krishna, but I lost Krishna because of my foolishness. Oh, where is Krishna? I want Krishna. This is the mood we want to develop. Are you getting it? It's little, it's, it, there is more emotions there. It's like, I give an example. It's like, for example, there's an announcement that there is a Kohinoor diamond, you know, the most precious diamond, it's like worth millions of dollars. There's a Kohinoor diamond in this hall. It's hidden somewhere. Whoever finds it, it's yours. The time starts now, so we'll all frantically search for it, right? But imagine, this is one scenario. The second scenario is, imagine you had Koinur diamond with you. It was in your pocket. And you lost it. You, it fell off your pocket. And now you realize, oh, it's lost. And then you're searching for it. In which of these two scenarios, would your search be more intense? The first or the second? Second. The second scenario. Why? Yes. Because you had that diamond and you lost it. So, we are not like, you know, our mood is, I had Krishna, I was so close to Krishna. Hari Hari, Bifare Janam, I had Krishna, <coughs> but I lost Krishna. Where are you, Krishna? Era Deva Jadevi Ke Chadavite Enanda Shuno Kuta Shri Govardhana Kalpa Pada Patale Kalindi Vane Kuta Goshanta Viti Sarvato Rajapure Ke De Mahavi Vado Vande Rupa Sanatana Shri Jiva Gopalako All our Acharya that taught us this Hey Radhe, oh Radha Rani, oh Krishna, where are you? Are you on the banks of Yamuna? Are you in Govardhan? We are looking for Krishna, we want to be with Krishna That is the mode of separation that we want to cultivate We want to, we want to hanker for Krishna And Radhashtam is a day when we pray to Shri Radha Rani Please give us this mode, please give us this hanker 
and this is developed when you have a mode of service. Otherwise, you are constantly trying to enjoy, then we miss out on this mode. See, our problem is we are always living in the I space. Even lectures we hear, it's all about what is practical. I want to learn. It's all about me. I am me and mine. Krishna space is about Krishna, where there is nothing about me. We, see, we think generally God exists for me, right? God means he is busy solving my problems. <laughs> he exists to solve my problems. But Radhastrava today when we meditate on what is Krishna doing when he is not busy solving my problems? Krishna also is an individual, he is, a, he is a supreme individual. He has his likes, he has his pastimes, he has his lovers, he has his devotees. What does he do with them? I am eager to know that. So we are moving from I space to God space. Krishna rather than his pastimes, independent of our existence. For some time, that is one, service mode. Second, very very important, connected to this service mode is we also need to cultivate an attachment to our spiritual master, Guru. Because he is the one who reveals to us the glories of Srimati Radharani and Krishna. In Vrindavan, Govardhan, there is a place called Shivke. So children were playing and they found a chapel. And they started harassing the chapel. They started beating the chapel with stones. And the chapel ran and fell into a well, a ditch. And these children were very mischievous, very naughty. And they started troubling the jackal. They covered the ditch with dry grass and they set it on fire. And the jackal was screaming. Now, jackal is not a very popular animal in India. Even amongst animals, the lion is glorified for its regal majesty. The cow is worshipable. Horse is considered very beautiful. But jackal is like considered very low class. The way the jackal howls, shrieks, and is considered a scavenger. Jackal is not at all popular. But this jackal was being harassed by the children, and when there was fire all around, the jackal started screaming loudly for help. At that time, Srimati Radharani, with her friends, Lalita, Vishaka, Tungavidya, all of them, they were in the same area. Radharani heard this shrieking voice of the jackal. She turned to her associate, Lalita. She said, who is this crying in great pain? I can't bear to see this. Please go and get this person to me. So Lalita said, immediately went to that place. She saw the children having fun in the experience of the suffering jackal. She drove away the kids and then she picked up that jackal and she brought the jackal to Srimadhi Radharani. Srimadhi Radharani very tenderly cared for the jackal. She, she rubbed the jackal. She brought the jackal back to good health. And she blessed that jackal and gave her, gave that jackal a body of a gopi, a spiritual form of a covered damsel of Vinda. So this is the first time which teaches us Lalita Saki, she is the original spiritual master. She is the representative of spiritual master. Or Guru is the representative of Lalita Saki. Srimati Radharani sends Guru in our life, spiritual master in our life, who like Lita Saki picks us up, we are like the jackal burning in the fire of material existence. Samsara dava naranida loka pranaya karunya grana karnatma. We are burning in this forest fire of material existence. And Guru, as a representative of Radharani, very mercifully picks us up from this suffering. So we need to remember Guru, spiritual master, and also cultivate the mode of service attitude. These are the two things we need to do to develop <coughs> or to attract blessings of Sri Mantra Radharani and Madhashtami. And there are two more I want to share quickly. The third is, we also, I have seen all this, you see I have been, I first went to Barsana Dham, Sri Mantra Radharani abode in the year 1998 for Ayatra. And since then I have consistently seen that those who really really love Krishna, those who really love Radharani, those who really are devotees of Radha Krishna, Radha Govinda, they are always appreciating other devotees of Radha Krishna. Appreciation culture is most important if we want to attract the blessings of the devotees. When we appreciate other devotees, we feel a lot of joy in our heart. And Radharani is very happy. I'll give you an example. In one yatra I was there, just Barsana Dham and uh, Isolina Sachinandan Maharaj, my Guru Maharaj, 
Maharaj, Zorina Nara, Swami Maharaj, Bhakti Vrind Goyen Maharaj, any senior Srila Prabhupada disciples were there. They were all speaking many amazing pastimes of Radharani, very deep pastimes. And suddenly one of them stopped. And there was Janani Vas Prabhu also. And uh, I think it was Satyanathan Maharaj, or Bibi Goyen Maharaj, or Radharani Maharaj, one of them said. I think we should now start speaking about the greatest devotee of Radharani. That way Radharani will be more happy. Just like we don't want to see God, but we want to serve God in such a way that God wants to see us. Similarly, we want to glorify Radharani, but more than glorifying Radharani, we want to glorify those who are very dear to Radharani. Then Radharani will hear, us, hear, hear our prayers more seriously. And they looked at Janani Vasprabhu and they said, Janani Vasprabhu has been serving Radha Madhav for the last 40 years. And they started speaking about his devotional service. And the whole energy there was amazing, everybody is appreciating him. And I am and consistently seeing that devotees of Krishna, they love to serve and glorify other devotees of Krishna. Appreciation is extremely important. Today we are coming to the, coming to the temple. On the way, the devotees are glorifying the devotees of this temple, this community. Well, I am coming here first time. So I was hearing glories of Pushta Krishna Prabhu, Mother Nidra, and other devotees. And I was like, wow, oh, they are serving for so many years. They are doing, I'm sure there are more devotees here. But the point is, this culture of appreciation, actually, association of devotees makes Adarani very attentive to us. <laughs> she becomes very pleased to see that we have this mode, this culture of appreciating her devotees. You know, there is also three ways of associating with devotees. Appreciation basically means associating, loving other devotees. At the lowest level of association is we come together and we just come together. You know, we could go to a bar, we could go to movies, we could do a lot of nonsense things and then say that I am associating with others. <laughs> I am associating with this devotee, I am associating with this Prabhu, but we are doing all nonsense. That is the lowest level of association. The higher level of association is this. Where we come together and serve, we come together and hear, we chant, which is higher level of association. But there is a highest level of association. And that is when we depend on the blessings of other devotees. Like if I am thinking, okay, I want, I want your blessings, I want his blessings. I want to please him so that I can get your blessings. If I am in this mood, then even if I am very far away, Thousands of miles away, I am associating with you because I am remembering you and hungering for your blessings. And at the end of the day, you know, as I am getting older, I am realizing I am 52 now. When I was younger, I wouldn't have spoken about this with so much passion. But now I am really convinced we all need blessings. We all, we are all vulnerable. We all have our weaknesses. And we all are struggling in our devotional service. So then we pray for each other. That's, a, that's the fourth point. Praying for others. As we are associating and appreciating each other, we also need to pray for others. We are always full of ourselves. And because of this, we are unable to access the mercy of the Lord. Praying for others is an amazing, amazing experience. See, recently, last uh, 15 days, I lost four, I saw the death of four devotees whom I knew very well. Just two days ago, one boy, Gansham, who has been coming for our classes and sitting right in the front. Always wonderful, cheerful devotee. Suddenly, last month he was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. And in one month, he left his body. And our community is still in a state of shock. So, not this is one. There's another devotee who was struggling and he ended his life. It's very, very unfortunate. But so many devotees are going through so much struggle. Somebody is going through some business loss. Somebody is going through some relationship issues. When we genuinely pray for others, we move beyond ourselves. See, right now, we are not able to experience the ecstasy of bhakti because we are swimming in the shallow waters of Hare Krishna. There are deep waters also. When, we, when I was growing up as a kid in our Mumbai colony, we had a swimming pool in a uh, place where I was staying. So I remember when we started learning swimming, we used to swim only in the shallow waters. And the seniors would swim in the deep, there was a deep side of the swimming pool where it was like I think 20, 15 foot. And uh, people, some of the seniors would swim there. And they would tell us, come on, come on, come here. And I would say, no, 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 I'm scared. Well, I'm just learning to water in the water. I, I'm very scared. But they would keep inviting me and I would say, no, no, I'm happy in this shallow water. 
And they said, you're not swimming, you just have to do the same clapping, you just have to do this there, and you'll enjoy more. I said, no, 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 I'm happy. Then one day they tricked me. They called me on the side of the pool, I was standing there, and all of them were there, all the other boys and girls, all the other community members, the college members were also there. And what happened? Somebody tricked me, and then suddenly I was thrown into the deep side of the pool. I fell, and they knew I was swimming, and as soon as I fell in, and I panicked, and I came on the surface, and immediately I, you know, I, I paddled and I waddled, and I came to the uh, bank, and then I realized it's not bad after all, it's fun. And then I went again, and then that, after that I never went to the shallow waters. Because the variety we had in the deep water, you know, then I learned diving, then back diving, and then somersault. <laughs> and the deep waters were so exciting. After that, I would never go to the shallow waters. There was no variety there. So, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Rupa Goswami says, Bhakti is an ocean which has no shores and no bottom. It's a vast ocean, dive into it. But they're unable to dive because they're happy in the shallow waters of I, me, and mine. But when we start living for others, when we, when we explore a reality beyond ourselves, then life changes dramatically. And we start experiencing the joy of Bhakti Yoga. I would like to end with one personal story, and then uh, we have time for questions. I was told, yeah, we don't have time. I'll just end with this personal story. Just convince me how praying for others helps a lot. On our last day, I, 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 I want to share this exercise that I did for one month. And after this one month, this has become a habit of mine now. I did it every day for five minutes, writing a prayer for somebody else. All of you know at least 50 people in your life, right? At least 50 people you know. So just take a paper and pen or your smartphone in the morning. I write a name, the random name, okay? And then next to that name, the two words are common. Radha Krishna, please, or Krishna, please, or Shri Radharani, please. This is common two words. And then I write one line prayer or two line prayer. Like Sundaranam Prabhu, bash. Krishna, please cure him of his cancer and let him have a healthy life. It just takes a few seconds. So I write minimum five names and I just write one line prayer. Sometimes for children who come for my classes, sometimes for their parents, sometimes for somebody else. But very important, the prayer is not centered on me. It's not that. No, I want something from this person. You can't write a prayer like, you know, okay, I can't write name like, okay, I'm the last group. Krishna, please let him understand how great I am. <laughs> you can't have prayer centered on self. Genuinely about somebody else, I'm sure we know some people are suffering. We just write one sentence about others and appreciate them or write a prayer for them. And I've seen after three, four weeks, my consciousness has just changed so wonderfully. You know, I don't know how much benefit the other person got by my prayers, but I saw my own heart become free of envy. I wouldn't say I'm free of envy totally, but I could see non-enviousness sprout. <laughs> I could see the joy of, I could see, see there is no happiness in this world, but when you see people suffering, you're not happy, but there is a certain kind of, certain kind of, it's a paradox. There is, there is feeling love by Krishna, and also empathy for others' suffering. I, I can't express it better than this. <laughs> like one devotee told me that when his father passed away, he was grief stricken, he was devastated, but his heart was also filled with gratitude because of what his father had done for him. So there was a paradox of emotions. There was sadness, but also gratitude and love. That's what Krishna consciousness does to us when we live a life centered on praying for others. So these are the four principles. Service, second, Anybody remember? Four, spiritual master connection. Third, appreciation of other devotees. And fourth, praying for others. So to summarize, today briefly, we have just five minutes for questions. Just to start before we take questions or comments. Today we discussed three topics. Who is Srimadhi Radharani? She is the universal mother. She helps us connect with Krishna. She is not different from Krishna, like sunshine is not different from sun. And then, what does she exemplify? She exemplifies the mode of devotion, selfless service, and separation highest. Love of Krishna and separation, Vipra Lamba, that is exemplified by Srimadhi Radharani. And how can we access Srimadhi Radharani's grace? By cultivating a mode of service, 
And that was a more such exemplary otherness mode that Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to understand what is this mode. Then we discussed the other three principles were uh, connecting to spiritual master because like the jackal got deliverance from Elida Sakhi and Shrita Radharani, we are like jackals, we will be blessed by our Guru and Shrita Radharani. Then we discuss the power of appreciating others that way, especially others who are dear to Radharani, and finally praying for others and moving beyond ourselves. If you practice this, then Radhashtami festival can mark an auspicious beginning of our new life centered on attracting grace every day, every moment. So I appeal and I beg all of you to please overlook my shortcomings and not take any offense from what I've spoken. And please bless me also. Let us all pray for each other. And excess Shivati Radharani's infinite, most compassionate grace. Shivati Radharani ki jai. Radhashtami Mahamohan sir ki jai. Kishi Rana Govinda Bhagavan ki jai. Kena Tukhya Subhadra Maya ki jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki